This is Ms. Kissel, and I'll be talking about circular motion and gravitation. There are two ways an object can move in a circle. The first way is to rotate. An object rotates when its axis is within the object. For example, this globe is rotating because the axis is right here through the center of the globe. The actual Earth rotates on its own axis as well. The CD is rotating on its own axis, or at least it will be once it's in the computer. The other way an object can move in a circle is to revolve. The Earth revolves around the Sun because the axis is not within the object, the Earth. The axis is here through the Sun. If you're riding on a merry-go-round, then you are revolving around the axis through the middle of the merry-go-round. The entire merry-go-round itself is rotating. The speed at which something rotates is called rotational speed or angular speed. It's calculated by finding the number of rotations or revolutions divided by the time. Try this practice problem. In rotations per minute, the rotational speed is 30 rotations divided by 2 minutes, or 15 rotations per minute, or RPM for short. In rotations per second, we have to take 30 divided by 120 seconds, because there are 120 seconds in 2 minutes. And we get 0.25 rotations per second. You could also abbreviate that RPS. Linear speed or tangential speed is just the normal linear speed of an object moving in a circle. In the past, we've calculated the linear speed of things that move in a line, for example, a car driving along the road. Calculating the linear speed of an object moving in a circle is very similar, but we have to remember that the distance around a circle or the circumference is 2 pi times the radius of the circle. So if an object moves around this circle once, then the distance it moves is 2 pi times the radius. Try this one. You'll need a calculator. The distance you move is the circumference of the circle, or 2 pi r. 2 times 3.14 times the radius, which is 3, equals 18.84 meters. When you go around 4 times, you just multiply this by 4. Which is 75.36 meters. To figure out your speed, you use the formula speed equals distance divided by time, or 75.36 meters divided by 2 seconds. Thirty seven point six eight meters per second. If an object is moving in a circle, then there must be a force on it because it's changing direction. Remember, acceleration can involve a change in speed or a change in direction, and acceleration always, always requires a force. So the force that moves something in a circle is called a centripetal force. For example, suppose we have a ball tied to a string, and it flies around in a circle like this. The centripetal force in this case is the tension of the string pulling on the ball and the direction of centripetal force is toward the center of the circle. Now I'm going to show you a little animation that shows the difference between linear speed and rotational speed and also shows centripetal force and centripetal acceleration. Here I have a ladybug and a beetle and I'm going to get them spinning. Now they both have the same rotational speed, or actually it'd be revolutional speed because each of them is revolving, because they're moving the same number of turns per second. Anytime two objects are spinning on the same platform such as this, 
they'll have the same rotational speed. But their linear speeds are different. The green arrows show their linear or tangential speed. It's called tangential speed because the direction of it is tangent to the circle or perpendicular to the radius. The beetle is twice as far out from the center as the ladybug is. So its linear speed is twice as great as the ladybug's linear speed. I'm getting a little dizzy, so I'm going to pause this. Now, these pink vectors show the acceleration. They also show the direction of the centripetal force because the force and the acceleration are in the same direction. In this case, the centripetal force is caused by the friction between each bug and the platform. If there were no friction, there would be no centripetal force and the bugs would not be able to move around in a circle. They would just fly off in a straight line. Newton's law of universal gravitation says that all objects with mass, which is pretty much all objects, attract all other objects with mass. So if I have two super balls sitting here, then there's going to be a force of attraction between them. Each one will feel a force toward the other one. Now, Newton's law of gravitation says that the force depends on two things. First of all, it depends on the masses of the objects. If the objects have greater masses, then there's a greater force. It also depends on the distance between them. If the objects are closer together, the force is stronger. If they're farther apart, the force is weaker. Now you don't notice this force between everyday objects, such as two Super Bowls sitting on the table, because the force is extremely weak unless at least one of the objects has a huge mass, such as the Earth. So right now, you notice the force of gravity between your body and the Earth because the Earth's mass is huge. Newton's law of universal gravitation can also be written in a formula like this. G is a constant that equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Don't worry too much about the units. But it's a constant just the way that pi is always 3.14, 159. G is always 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Then M1 and M2 are the masses of the two objects that you're figuring out the force for. And D is the distance between the centers of the objects. Answer question three. Yes, there is a force between you and your computer. You don't notice it because it's so weak because your masses are both so small. Try number four. If you look at the formula, F equals G, M1, M2 over D squared, and then you imagine doubling this distance. You'd be dividing by a number that's going to be doubled and then squared. So you'd be dividing by 4. So the force would become 1 fourth as strong. Try number 5. It's the last one. If your mass doubles, If your mass doubles, then the force is also going to double. If your mass doubles and you're half the distance away, it's a little trickier. Having double the mass means the force is two times as strong. And being half the distance away means that here on the bottom of the fraction, you're going to be dividing by a half squared. So that means you're dividing by one-fourth. If you remember the rules for dividing fractions, dividing by one-fourth is the same as multiplying by four. So we're multiplying by two and multiplying by four, which means the force is eight times as great. And you are all done.